Of course, Charlene the Hunter Gull looks a lot better than I, but the truth is we were separated at birth, and I will explain that in a moment. But her story is illustrative of the butterfly effect. That something very small happening in some way off place will lead to bigger things later on. And uh, what happened is that Charlene Hunter Galt, when she was a little girl in Covington, Georgia, would follow her best friend to school. Uh, her best friend was in the first grade, with the result that the teacher later admitted uh, Charlene into the class and she graduated at the end of her fifth year before becoming six. Now that resulted in her graduating uh, from an Atlanta high school in 1959 and thus becoming a part of the team with Hamilton Holmes who would successfully desegregate the University of Georgia in January of 1961. Now had she started school at the regular time, first grade when she turned six, she would have been a year late. And so that little event, that butterfly flapping its wing in Conyers, Georgia, would give us Charlene Hunter Gold. Uh, the uh, events uh, began to go fast forward on January the 9th, 1961, when she and Hamilton Holmes showed up on campus. Uh, there had been court delays, there had been a whole process. She had gone off to Wayne State and studied for a while there while waiting a final order of admissions. And finally that did come in January of 1961. And you can see the pictures. There was violence on this campus, there was tear gas on this campus, windows were being broken out, threats being shouted uh, at uh, Charlene and Hamilton Holmes. Um, two remarkable high school students, two years out, now turned University of Georgia students, and they were threatened. Uh, the drive back and forth between Atlanta and Athens took them through small communities where you didn't know whether you were going to come out on the other side of the city limits alive. Uh, you know, the, uh, uh, later, uh, the story of Lemuel Penn up here in Comer, Georgia, and his murder. They ran that gamut of threat and intimidation. Uh, so it was a very difficult time. Uh, the forces of segregation continued to try to intimidate uh, the governor. The governor had caved in earlier, but finally stood his ground uh, to protect uh, at least law and order. He's the one who famously said uh, a year or two before that when he was running for governor, no, not one. And that was the cry I often heard from segregationists, especially public officials, that there would never be one in the University of Georgia, meaning one African American. The university didn't do its best. Dean Tate is often certainly credited with doing his best, uh, you know, in trying to facilitate uh, her and Hamilton's time here. Uh, they were befriended by some students, not all. Some students uh, didn't mind their manners and shouted ugly things, but not many. Uh, the great majority just sort of froze her out. And uh, so she made her way to her sort of lonely finish here uh, in 1963. Uh, there, there are three trip hammers that go 61, 62, 63. Georgia first, Ole Miss second, then finally George Wallace at the schoolhouse door, and the issue of public uh, uh, universities and segregation is over. The race beat became part of the national staple of journalism. And it was really over then. But it was over then because the world could see it. You could never, no longer hide the evil of segregation 
it took journalism to awaken the world. And yet, we were separated at birth. We were separated by law and by custom that was cruel, so cruel that I could not make a friend of someone of a different color. Uh, and that's what had to change in the South, and that's what she and Hamilton Holmes and so many others had the courage to make happen. Never underestimate the power of people to change the world in which they live. Charlene certainly did it, uh, and I'm certainly the beneficiary.